kid. Han might be one of the most memorable Fast and Furious characters, but did you know that the character was actually created for another film? That's right, Han is not exclusive to the Fast franchise. Every great character has their origin story, and Han's is so good that he made a major crossover before crossovers were even a thing. So who was Han before he joined Dom's crew? Let's dive into the classic character's backstory so we can be prepared for when he gets his much needed justice in Fast and Furious 9. Han and his creator Justin Lin have a very long history together. While we know Han best from his secret racing days in Tokyo, Justin Lin enlisted actor Sun Kang's help in creating the character all the way back in 2002 for his film Better Luck Tomorrow. The Han from each film is definitely the same character, which means that Better Luck Tomorrow is actually a Fast and Furious prequel. The film can teach us a couple of things about Han, including how he got into a life of crime and why the character remains one of the most loyal members of Dominic Toretto's crew. Loosely based on the crimes that ended the life of Stuart Tay, Better Luck Tomorrow follows the lives of academically overachieving culprits as they chase life's thrills by engaging in some fun and not so criminal activities. Ben Manabag, played by Perry Shen, and Virgil Hugh, played by Jason Tobin, are technically the main stars of the film, but Sun Kang's Han also plays a pivotal role throughout the movie as the enforcer of the ragtag little group. Han is Virgil's cousin, and he and Derek Liu, played by actor Roger Fang, tag along with the group during their shenanigans. These range from petty crimes like illegal street racing to something much bigger. The group ends up eliminating the wealthy boyfriend of Stephanie, played by Karen Anna Chung, because she's Ben's dream girl. Better Luck Tomorrow ends with the gang getting away with this major crime, which sets Han up for a full life of criminal activities. One of the best representations of Han's character in the film comes from this line of dialogue he shares with Ben. People like you and me, we don't have to play by the rules, we can make our own. Han is not a bad guy necessarily, but he is willing to break some rules to get what he wants. That's what makes him so interesting. He's fiercely loyal to his friends, and as a result, both Kang and Lin are fiercely loyal to the character. That's why, after his tough life in Better Luck Tomorrow, the character earned himself a second life in the Fast and Furious franchise. A fun look at how Han from The Fast and Furious connects to the Han from Better Luck Tomorrow can be seen in this little easter egg. Ever notice how Han eats a lot of chips and snacks in the Fast films? Well, in Better Luck Tomorrow, Han was always busy smoking. Now, snacks deter him from picking up his old bad habit. He's even snacking as he walks into the crew's lair in the F9 trailer. We gotta give Justin Lim props for that attention to detail. Well, we had a life before you met us. Luckily, we don't need Easter eggs to prove that the two characters are connected. They're just a fun little extra. Justin Lin has confirmed with Entertainment Tonight that he considers the Han from Better Luck Tomorrow to be the exact same person as in The Fast and Furious. There was no initial plan to have Han in Tokyo Drift. Instead, Lin called up Sun Kang to read for the role of Sean Boswell, which eventually went to Lucas Black. Lin realized that he wanted Han's character to live on, since Better Luck Tomorrow wasn't getting any sequels. So, he decided to include the character in the car-centric films, leading to Han's renaissance in the long-running franchise. Hmm, sounds like Han really has a thing for being resurrected. But of course we know that things didn't work out so well for Han in Tokyo Drift. The street racer offers Sean Boswell some much-needed mentoring in the flick. He even lends the driver his car for a street race. But near the end of the film, Han's vehicle is T-boned and he gets trapped in a fiery wreck. Sean runs to save him, but he doesn't get there in time. That was presumably the end of his life. We wouldn't find out until The Fast and Furious 6, but it was actually Jason Statham's character Deckard Shaw who dealt the fatal blow as revenge for losing his brother Owen to Dom's crew. Luckily for Han, and for us, director Justin Lin wasn't about to throw in the towel after Tokyo Drift wasn't so well received. Instead, the series got a major retcon, which is why you might have been confused at first when Han showed up looking just fine in the franchise's fourth film. That's a price I can live with. But he actually made a small reappearance in the series before the fourth film even occurred. Narrative-wise, Han first went on to meet Dom when he visited Mexico. Their first encounter occurred in the Fast and Furious short film, Los Bandoleros, which was impressively directed, co-written, and co-produced by Vin Diesel. In the short, Dom and Han start teaming up together, although it's unclear why they'd even come into contact in the first place. But as they say, the rest is history? With the timeline now retconned, the fourth, fifth, and sixth installment of the Fast Saga would all take place before the tragic events of 
of Tokyo Drift, giving Han a well-earned second life. Something else these fast films all have in common is a director. While Justin Lin hasn't directed every fast film, he has directed every single movie Han has been in. So really, we shouldn't have been surprised when Han popped up in the F9 trailer looking just fine. With Lin back in the helm for the upcoming film and the confirmed 10th film to be released in 2021, it's safe to expect that he's going to build on what we already know about Han's character so far. In fact, Justin Lin has been spotted wearing a Justice for Han t-shirt while filming on set. For those of you who don't know, hashtag Justice for Han was a huge trending fan movement that occurred after the character was seemingly eliminated for good once the fast timeline caught up with itself. Fans were upset that they wouldn't get to see Han, sure, but it was a lot more than that. Han has been through a lot. He finally found a family he could stick with thanks to Dom Toretto and the gang. He even found himself a life partner in Gal Gadot's Giselle. But these things were unceremoniously ripped away from him. Sheesh, for someone who created and claims to love Han, Justin Lin has sure put him through the ringer. Yeah. In Fast and Furious 6, right before the character is set to move to Tokyo, Giselle sacrifices herself to save Han from Owen Shaw's henchman, Adolfson. This ends her time in the Fast franchise, and she's since moved on to playing Wonder Woman for DC, but the loss was obviously heartbreaking for Han. He still leaves for Tokyo at the end of the film, which made us all wish we could tell him not to. Tokyo is only bad news, Han! Stay away! But alas, movie characters can't hear our warnings, so Han's remains were picked up from Tokyo by Dom in Fast and Furious 7, and the family had a touching funeral for the character. And then, despite Deckard Shaw being the weasel who took Han away from us, Dom kind of forgives the character, and he becomes an anti-hero in the Fast and Furious spin-off movie Hobbs and Shaw? Yeah, this is where the justice tagline at the end of the F9 trailer comes in. If anyone deserves justice for how he's been treated and booted off the series twice, it's Han. Do you think he'll be angry with Dom during F9? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. It can be argued that Han is actually the most important character in the Fast Saga. Sure, there's Dom and Paul Walker's Brian O'Connor, who we still miss, but Han was one of the characters that helped rejuvenate the entire series. Too Fast to Too Furious was one of the franchise's worst installments. Tokyo Drift wasn't received that much better, but it had two things going for it. Awesome cars, and Han. And of course, anyone that's named after a famous Star Wars character is going to be pretty epic. By keeping Han around, Tokyo Drift has served a greater purpose, and this was proven by the series deciding to create more connections with the film and make Deckard Shaw the one responsible for Han's accident. Now, Han is interwoven in all aspects of the franchise, so of course, he's going to be back for Fast and Furious 9. So how do y'all want to play this? Interestingly, Justin Lin also brought Jason Tobin from Better Luck Tomorrow over to Tokyo Drift, but he wasn't playing Virgil. He was an entirely new character named Earl Hugh. Earl, who's good friends with Han, is also returning in Fast 9. Hmm, seems like Justin Lin really likes to keep the crew together. So, with the complicated place Han is coming from, it's likely that the character will have a lot of complex emotions to deal with in F9. Did he really overcome Dom kind of betraying him while he was away? Han's a good guy, but it's hard to ignore that kind of broken trust. Just because someone is, oh, you know, not on this earth anymore, doesn't mean we can just forget about them. It's entirely possible that Han isn't going to be so friendly with Dom when F9 hits theaters. It's even theorized that Han could be the series' newest villain. I know, I know, I know, it's crazy, right? Han, the villain? Well, we can't forget that there's some insane reasons he's still alive. A strange shadow organization like Etion from Hobbs and Shaw could be behind it. They showed us with Idris Elba's character Britain Lore that cybernetic enhancements could be used to keep people alive in the Fast and Furious universe. So let's not completely rule out brainwashing, or that Han could be a really impressive looking imposter, which would be terrible, but also really, really cool. But even if Han isn't mad at Dom, there's a very good chance he's upset with Deckard Shaw. Is he back to get his revenge? Is that why this Justice is Coming thing is highlighted in the trailer? There are still so many questions. Don't put it past Lin to make a good chunk of the movie about Han and his need for revenge. We might get to see a side of the character that we've never seen before. And I sure wouldn't be mad if he gets more screen time in F9 than he has in any other Fast film. So to find out more about Han, we'll have to wait until F9 hits theaters on May 22nd, 2020. Vin Diesel has teased that Fast and Furious 10 will be the series' final film, but that it also might be released in two parts. Does that mean three more confirmed films for Han? Well, with Justin Lin involved, probably. But don't worry if three more films doesn't sound like enough Fast and Furious for you. Vin Diesel also said he wants the spin-offs to keep coming and the universe to keep growing. 
So dare we hope for Han to get his own spin-off movie? Well, if the series doesn't eliminate him for the third time, then it's very possible. That is, if Sung Kang hasn't gotten tired of portraying the iconic street racer. But if he has, we can either expect a happy ending for Han, or for him to go out with a bang. Does the character really deserve an ending that's anything less than epic? Yeah, didn't think so. Who cares what other people think? Do you hope Han tries to get his revenge in F9? Do you think that he'll be sticking around for the 10th and maybe final film? Drop all of your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Screen Rant for more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. See, that wasn't so bad.